Hello, hello, hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft mining tutorial for version 1.19. In this tutorial we are going to be covering block entities. So this is the start of what I will consider a mini series where we are going to be trying to create a crusher block. This will have a GUI, a container, uh, custom recipes, all of that fancy stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've already done the basic stuff of creating a block. I've got a custom class, of course, because we'll need that. And I've done the assets as well. So let's jump straight into our block. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do is implement uh, entity block. And this will allow our block entity to uh, essentially be a block entity. So we're going to want new block entity and get ticker. Now before I continue with this, I'm going to briefly explain what a block entity is, as some people may not be aware. So block entities essentially allow us to uh, both store data and to be able to perform something every tick uh, with our block. Additionally, it allows us to do something like uh, block entity rendering, which allows us to do special rendering such as uh, rendering an item on our block, rendering a fluid, something like that. Or you can use it for things like energy, uh, storing items, storing fluids, all of that fancy stuff which we will be covering soon. So with these methods let's quickly just go ahead and rename some things. So this is the pause, this is the state, this is the level. Soon we will be switching to parchment. Um, instead of these horrible parameter names but for now we'll just put up with this so okay we'll do new block entity first so for this we're actually going to need to register a block entity so let's come into our init package and let's go a new class and we'll do block entity init okay and we're going to want our usual public static final deferred register of type block Oh, type block entity type and this will just be uh, of wildcard and then we'll just call this block underscore entities and that will be equal to deferred register dot create forward registries dot block entity types and then our mod ID and before we forget, let's go ahead and register this in our main class constructor. So block uh, entity init dot block entity dot register and books. Okay. Then let's just create a block entity. So we're going to want a public static final registry objects. This will be of type block entity type. And in here, we're just going to put a block entity class, which will be a crusher block entity. And I'll just call this crusher. It's equal block entities dot register crusher. All of this should be fairly familiar to you by now, as we've done this thing many, many times. Uh, we're just going to do block entity type dot builder dot of and then we're going to do crusher block entity colon colon new and then it's we also need to supply the valid blocks and this is just a list of blocks that this block entity will be valid for so we only want our one block and that is the crusher but say you wanted it to be valid on a different block as well you could have multiple blocks in here, so you could say blocks dot dirt, for example. Um, but we'll just stick with the crusher for now. Okay, and then after that, we just want to do dot build and pass in null. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this class. We're going to want a new package for this, so we'll do we'll just call this block entities. And in here, we're going to want a new class. This will be our crusher block entity. 
extends block entity. Okay, fantastic. And we're just going to add the constructor. Now, straight away, let's rename these parameters. So we'll go pause and the state. And we're going to remove this first parameter and just pass in to the super block entity in it dot crusher dot get there we go now if we come into here we can just import that class there we go and that's going to tell us it doesn't like that but that's fine that's not an issue and fantastic so we can now come into our block class again and we can do block entity in it dot crusher dot get and then you can just call dot create and pass in the pause and the state there you go alternatively you could do just a new crusher block entity however i prefer to do it this way just uh, in case you know I, I don't know it just makes more sense to me to do it this way it's not completely hard coded and then we're going to basically be doing the same with the ticker so I should mention you only need this get ticker method if you intend your block entity to do something every tick if you if it's not going to do something every tick then you can just completely uh, just get rid of that method you don't need it but our block entity is going to be doing something every tick so what we're going to do is we're first going to check level dot is client side and if it's client side we're just going to say null now if it's not client side we're going to want to add this um, functional interface here and rename these to their respected things. So this is a level as this first parameter, so we don't actually need this. So I'm just going to do dollar sign zero. And then this is the pause. Now we actually do want this. This here, this is the block state, so we can just do dollar sign one. We don't want that. And this is the actual. Uh, block entity so we're going to want that one okay and all we need to do is say uh, if um, block entity is instance of our block entity class so crusher block entity and i'll just call this crusher then all we need to do is do crusher dot tick there we go now, if we come into our crusher class, we can just go ahead and create this tick method. That's a public void tick. There you go. And you'll see that works perfectly fine. Okay, fantastic. So, we actually don't need this pause, so we could just do dollar sign one for that and dollar sign two for that one. Well, actually, can we? No, okay. Fantastic. So that's pretty much all we're going to need. We are going to want to override the use method, but that will be more for a future tutorial. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and rename these and we'll cover the actual uh, use in possibly the next tutorial. We'll see. So this is the level and this is the pause, the player and the hand and finally the hit result there we go okay and we'll just leave that there for now so now we can come into our block entity class and we can do whatever we want so you have this tick method you are free to do whatever you want in here so if you want to access the current uh, level you can just do this dot level if you want to access the current block position it's just this dot block pause um, or this dot world position they're the same thing um, if you want to access the state you can just do get block state um, yeah and that's pretty much all you would really need yeah so from there you can really do uh, whatever you want uh, if you want to save data in your block entity which you're probably going to want to do let's say you want to have a field here so private int progress right and you're probably going to want to save that progress so let's go ahead and say um, 
let's, let's just say in our take method we do progress plus plus if progress is greater than and we'll just create a quick constant here so private static final um, int max underscore progress we'll just say if it's equal to 100 so let's just do that okay so if it's greater than max progress then we can just say progress is equal zero and then i don't know you could um do something so like this dot level dot add fresh entity a new uh, pig entity maybe new pig uh, just give it this dot level oh no what it, it takes okay so the entity type so entity types dot pig and then uh, this dot level right and that's actually not going to work because we haven't set the position. So let's just quickly do our pig is equal to that, and then pig dot set position. Uh, this dot world position dot x. This dot world position dot y. And this dot world position dot z. And then just add a pig. And you would now have that. So basically, that would mean uh, every. Uh, that's fine. That's not going to be null. Just ignore that. Uh, but that would mean essentially every 100 ticks, it's going to spawn a pick, right? Um, and you may want to save that progress for when you leave the world and come back. You may want to save it. So to do that, you would just override the load method and also the save additional method. So let's just quickly go ahead and rename these. So that's the MBT and that's the MBT. Okay, we're gonna still want the super.load ideally. Add that back in. And all you'd need to do is something like uh, this dot uh, progress is equal MBT dot get integer or get int progress and when you save it you would just do nbt dot put int progress this dot progress and boom you've now saved some data um, we can actually go ahead and test this I suppose um, because that's pretty much it that's all I kind of wanted to show in this tutorial in the next one we'll probably be doing storing items in here but um, can I please get rid of this error or warning because it's wrong uh, okay well I guess what I can do if level is equal null then just return not that that it should never be null but IntelliJ is just being a little bit silly so if we do now go ahead and run the game, we should go ahead and see that it should spawn a pig essentially every 100 ticks. So let's go ahead and test it. All right, so here we are. I've got my crusher block out. As, as you can see, it's a professional texture as usual. And if we place it down, we should wait five seconds and a pig spawns. Obviously it's gonna spawn inside of the block because we haven't made uh, any adjustments it to do otherwise but that's going to happen every five seconds and you should see right so that's that was about a second there that passed so if we load back in we hopefully should see and we don't have a way to properly confirm this right now but if we go one two three yeah there you go so it's about right it's saved essentially and that's just going to keep killing them isn't it I don't know why I can't hit them. Oh, there you go. So yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this tutorial. However, in the next tutorial, we'll probably be covering storing items 
um, either that or sinking to the climb, but that will probably be in a future tutorial. Uh, I think it would make more sense there. So, yeah, I hope you guys did find this tutorial useful. If you did, please do be sure to smash your face into that like button and subscribe. If you really enjoyed, please do be sure to share it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Goodbye.